Hi, this is Pastor Elmer Arosa from Blessed City. Welcome to our Post Encounter Lesson 4B entitled Working with the Holy Spirit. I would like to take you to Genesis chapter 17, verses 1 and 2, and it goes like this. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Then I will make my covenant between me and you, and I will greatly increase your numbers. Something extraordinary happens when we invite the Holy Spirit to be part of our lives and to be part of our family. We experience one of the greatest blessings imaginable as we learn to let Him perfect us. As we allow the Holy Spirit to mold us, when you do, God uses the church, pastors, disciples to mold our character so we can stay on, on that track in alignment to God's plan and agreement of blessings and multiplications. Again, when we invite the Holy Spirit in our lives, great blessings will be poured out unto you and to your family. Our example is in the Old Testament after the Lord revealed Himself to Abraham as the Lord Almighty, He said, Walk before me and be blameless. How could that be? It would be possible for Abraham to walk before God without first knowing the Lord as God Almighty, who can do all things. I love how God introduced Himself to Abraham when He said He is an Almighty God. Almighty means powerful. You know, I grew up in the Philippines where part of our culture as Filipinos is to believe in God. But knowing Him as all-powerful was just an idea or a picture painted in my mind because of religion. I didn't know the Bible. Back then, I wasn't reading it. And even if part of me believes that He is powerful, I guess it was just for other people because I knew in my heart that I am not worthy of Him. Especially the part of what He said, walk before me and be blameless. Until I got to know Him through His Son, Jesus Christ. That's when I became born again and started to live my spiritual life. That's when I experienced the power of God. The same thing happens to us. In order to walk before God in perfection, we must know Him as the God who can do all things. This can be accomplished through faith in Jesus Christ and when it happens, God gives us the right to become His child. That is what He promised in John chapter 1, verses 12 to 13. It says, But to all who believe in Him and accepted Him, He gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. In our flesh, we may have been conceived from human seed, but in the Spirit, we were born through the Holy Spirit. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20, Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price. So you must honor God with your body. So, even though the Holy Spirit lives in our bodies, He does not make us do anything we don't want to do. He is not a dictator. When He wants us to go to a certain direction or do a certain thing, He produces in us a desire for it. If the Lord wants to use you, He will guide you, your family, and your ministry. He doesn't dictate anything. In my own experience, I've seen this how... Pastor Aloys, my wife, been changed and transformed by the Holy Spirit. And that affected the way I view our ministry as well. After that, he's starting to put my house or my home into order, my relationship with her, and helping us how to guide and raise up our kids towards a genuine relationship with God. So we need to learn how to desire the presence of the Holy Spirit. 
There is a story in the Old Testament in the life of Prophet Elisha. When he met a woman in Shunem, the Shunammite woman recognized the holy life of this great prophet. She and her husband built an upper room for Elisha so he could stay with him and rest. You can find that in 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 8 to 10. And the story goes like this. One day, Elisha went to the town of Shunem. A wealthy woman lived there, and she urged him to come to her home for a meal. After that, whenever he passed that way, he would stop there for something to eat. So she said to her husband, I am sure that this man who stops in from time to time is a holy man of God. Let's build a small room for him on the roof and furnish it with a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp. Then he will have a place to stay whenever he comes by. This example of this, from this story shows us how we need to relate with the Holy Spirit. We need the desire to be a dwelling place for Him, to be His temple. In this story, the woman prepared a bed, she prepared a table, a chair, and a lampstand for her guest. It should be the same with us. We need to prepare our beds by inviting the Holy Spirit to watch over our dreams. David said in Psalms chapter 3, verse 5, I lie down and sleep, I wake again because the Lord sustains me. Psalms chapter 4, verse 7 and 8, You have given me greater joy than those who have abundant harvest of grain and a new wine. In peace I will lie down and sleep for you alone. O Lord, will keep me safe. The Holy Spirit should be able to be at our table as well, so He can bless our food and our fellowship around the table. He should be welcome as we sit in our chairs during our resting moments. We should prepare a lampstand so the Holy Spirit can be the one which ignites the light in our mind and give us enlightenment. Now, this relationship with the Holy Spirit cannot be built overnight or even after a few weeks or months. It has to be cultivated by the way we live. You need to learn how to tell the Holy Spirit, Lord, let my life be a dwelling place for you. Take control of who I am and use me to show your glory. You need to invite the Holy Spirit in your life to such a degree that you let Him guide every step of faith that you take. Walking in faith means to move in the supernatural dimension of the Holy Spirit's guidance. This may not seem logical at times. Nevertheless, it is important to live a room in your life, inside your heart, for the possibility of divine intervention. As you do, you will see extraordinary miracles and experience God's hand moving in every situation you go through. The Bible says in Zechariah 4.6, It is not by might, nor by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Keep in mind that if you invite the Holy Spirit into your life, you need to be careful not to make Him sad. You grieve the Holy Spirit every time you do your own will. If He tells you what to do, and you partially just do it or partially obey Him, you cause Him sadness. Our obedience needs to be immediate and totally aligned with His will. Another thing that we need to learn is to desire to bear fruit. If you know God and are in submission to His Lordship, you will desire to bear fruit. We have been studying this truth in the story of the Shunammite woman. You know, this woman and her husband did not have what they wanted the most, a child of their own. The man was old and they became resigned to the fact that would, they would remain child that they would remain childless for the rest of their lives. But because this woman was hospitable and invited the prophet to stay in her house, a great blessing came to her life. The prophet unleashed through his words and told her within a year she would conceive and have a son. She did not believe at first, but after a year, she was cradling, cradling a baby boy in her arms. 
The prophet is a symbolic of the Holy Spirit who works in our lives when he is openly invited to come in. I remember when God gave us kids, we were very, very happy. And up to now, we tell them that uh, the time that they came to our lives, that, was one of the more, that is one of the most happiest moments of our lives. You know, in the spiritual realm, when the Holy Spirit is invited in one's life, fruitfulness will follow you and will experience and you will experience a new degree of joy and happiness. The Holy Spirit gave us you. You know, the Holy Spirit gave us ministry, the church. That's our fruit. And the network of pastors as well. I want you to believe that you will be fruitful in many areas of your life as you learn and as you begin to desire to be a vessel, an instrument, so that other people will find their way back to God through you by the power of the Holy Spirit. All cell leaders and those who desire to become cell leaders, it is only through the Holy Spirit that's why you began to bear fruit and learn to take care of others. Another thing that we need to understand as we develop this working and friendship relationship with the Holy Spirit, I want you to expect that there are miracles in His presence. Our story continues with the Shunammite woman who experienced a great loss and who needed a miracle. Sadly, one day her son Promise went out to the field with his father, but he was struck down, probably a sunstroke, and he died in his mother's lap. With heavy pain in her soul, she approached the prophet and she wanted and pleaded the prophet to bring his son back to life. She knew that God's servant had the answer and she didn't want to leave him until she got her miracle from God. You know, her exact words were recorded. It was recorded in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 30. She said to the prophet, As the Lord lives and as you, as your soul lives, I will not leave you. She was very certain her son was going to live again. And she would not let go until her miracle came. You may be in a situation where the one thing you love the most is now gone. Maybe a relationship is dead or you're in a financial crisis or inside you you feel torn apart. Whatever your situation is, you must hold on to the Spirit of God and tell Him, Lord, I will not let you go until you bless me. You need to invite the Holy Spirit to come in and give life to all things you feel that are dead. Just like the Shunammite woman asked Prophet Elisha to raise up her dead son. Elisha prayed to the Lord and covered the child's body with his own body until the Lord brought the boy back to life. For us, the implication of this story represents this. God has to cover your mouth, your eyes, and hands because that is how you will start warming up again. God has to bring a burning coal to purify your lips and sanctify your words. Your eyes must see what is righteous. If you have noticed contamination in what you have been looking at, you have to ask God to forgive you today. The Spirit of God then will purify you by opening your eyes of faith so you can take salvation and bring its message to the nations of the earth. He will heal your hands. You may have mistreated, hurt, and rejected others with those hands, but today let the Lord sanctify them. The Spirit of God will come to your life and you will start feeling something inside you changing. Three steps to live with the Holy Spirit. Number one, have purity of heart. You need to be certain that your sins were cleansed and the wickedness of your past erased from your life. Then with a pure heart, you will be ready to receive the Holy Spirit. There should not be any vestige of impurity in your life that would block the Holy Spirit's entrance to your heart. Second, you need to ask. You need to ask the fullness of the Holy Spirit. In Acts, the believers asked for the Holy Spirit to come down to their lives. 
They persevered in prayer for 10 days because they were claiming the promise of Jesus gave them to wait for the gift of his, his father, which he had been mentioned to them many times. The 120 who were gathered there, they did not live until God answered their prayers, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And that is recorded in the book of, book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 4. And lastly, you need to believe. If you have asked God for His Spirit, your part now is to believe. Believing is having the certainty that the Lord has come to, you, to live in your life as He promised through His Word. If you ask Jesus into your heart, then you must act in faith, accepting that He lives there. The Holy Spirit is, ours, is as real as any person could be in your life. He is going to give you direction to your path, and He will help you balance every area of your life. When the Shunammite woman received the prophet, she received a person. And later, when she had a problem, she ran to that person. This is the same thing you should do with the Holy Spirit. Run to Him and believe Him. Again, having a genuine and real relationship with the Holy Spirit allows you to experience amazing miracles. In application, I would strongly encourage you to continue and set a special time that you will spend with God. Guard your devotional time. Keep your Bible at hand, and you can start discovering in the Word the blessings God has for you in your life and for those whom you love. Ask and allow the Holy Spirit to come into your life, to guide you, to lead you, and to bless you. Again, this is Post Encounter Lesson 4, Pastor Elmer Arosa from Blessed City. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. Holy Spirit, I invite you to dwell to those people who have watched this video training. I pray that you empower them. I pray that you create a desire for them to have partnership and deeper relationship with you. Lord, teach them to believe. Teach them to walk by faith so that they would see, O oh Lord, the great things that you have prepared for them. Father, thank you so much for the Holy Spirit is a fulfillment of your promise. He is the power that moves in our lives. We give you glory, Holy Spirit. Thank you that you have introduced Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, into our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.